Hi, it's Luke from Weld Pro. Today, I'm here with the MiG 200 multi-process welder. I want to teach you guys how to run stick with this thing today. It is an awesome machine, it is very versatile, and you should be able to lay down an awesome SMAW bead with no problem whatsoever. So follow along and I'll get you started. This stick process is personally my favorite. I love running stick. It can be a little challenging at first, but once you get the electrode manipulation under control, there are so many beautiful things you can do with a stick electrode. So many different types of base metals you can weld and dissimilar metals you can join together. So today, I've decided to use some 330 seconds 7018 low hydrogen electrodes. Now, the importance of a 7018 or a low hydrogen rod is that it remains dry. Most people will store these rods in a rod oven. Moisture can enter the flux of these welding rods. When you're welding, the moisture comes out in the form of gases, uh, therefore creating porosity in your weld pool. Keeping these rods dry is crucial. If you haven't done so already, we're going to go ahead and connect our stinger and our ground clamp to our MiG-200. Now, we want to be running DC electrode positive polarity for the type of stick welding electrode we have. Therefore, I'm going to take the lug from my stinger and put this into the positive terminal on the front of the MiG-200. Be sure to secure this with a slight clockwise turn. I'll then take my ground clamp and connect this to the negative terminal on the front of the MiG-200. So I've got the ground clamp on my table. My table is ground down, ready to make good connection to my workpiece. I've got my stinger hooked up and ready to go and my electrodes next to me. I'm going to go ahead and get my safety gear on, energize the machine, and we'll be ready to start welding. All right, I've gone ahead and prepared two strips of steel. They're about seven inches by two inches. So on the first one of these, I'm gonna lay down a couple flat passes and show you guys how to overlap. Before we get started welding, I'd like to give you just a few tips to help you when it comes to stick. Number one, your electrode holder has some grooves built into it. Depending upon your work position and the angle that you need your electrode to be at, you can place the electrode in this stinger in these grooves and it will hold it in position so it doesn't wiggle around. Stick welding puts off a heavy slag. There's an old saying that goes, if there's slag, you drag, okay? So what that means is you never push your weld pull when it comes to an electrode that produces slag. The reason for this being, you can push flux and slag ahead of the weld and then run your weld pool over top and it will actually bury that slag down at the bottom of your weld pool, causing incomplete fusion or weld inclusions. So with stick there slag, we're going to drag. Now, when you're dragging, it's important not to be straight up and down. It's also important not to have too much of a trailing angle. We want to be about five to 15 degrees off center when we're running stick. This will allow the most penetration and the cleanest weld pool. Something else to think of when it comes to stick welding. Your electrode is your consumable filler material. Therefore, the more you're welding, the shorter this electrode will become. It's important that you keep in mind you need to continually be bringing your hand closer to your workpiece, keeping the arc length the same, and keeping an eye on the weld pool so as to not stick your electrode in it or to extend your arc length too long, causing porosity. With 7018, when you're done welding, the filler material can burn up inside the flux, creating an inability to start your new arc. Something I like to do, take your stick electrode, either tap it gently or scrape it on your base material prior to welding. This will expose the filler material and make arc starting substantially easier. Because I'll be using a 330 second 7018 low hydrogen electrode, I'm going to need to set my amperage somewhere in like the 75 to 80 range. Now, every welder is different. Depending on what you're welding and what machine you're using, you may prefer a little higher amperage or a little lower amperage, depending on what your weld pool looks like. Don't worry, as time goes on, you'll start to develop an eye for the weld pool and start to understand what's too hot and what's too cold. I'm gonna go ahead and tack my base plate to my table.
Before I weld on my real base material, I like to take a piece of scrap metal and run a small pass across it at the amperage setting I'm trying. This will tell me if my weld looks acceptable or if I need to make a slight adjustment to my amperage. With my machine energized and in stick mode, I've gone ahead and adjusted my amperage setting to 75. I'm going to see how this runs. All right, so I got a little bit of this first pass done. I'm gonna go ahead and chip the slag off this weld and we'll see what it looks like so far. So far, so good, although it looks like my travel speed is a little high. We can tell this by the deep Vs that are appearing in our weld. All right, I'm going to slow my travel speed down just a hair and go ahead and finish this pass. We'll see how it comes out. The weld looks pretty good overall. The tie-in came out pretty nice. There are a couple spots down here towards the end where I moved a little quickly and left small gaps in the surface of my weld. With our first weld down, I'm going to go ahead and put down a second weld overlapping the previous pass about halfway. This will begin a multi-pass weld. Now that we've finished that weld, I'm going to chip the slag off so we can take a look at the bead appearance and make any adjustments as necessary. It's a good sign when the slag chips off in large chunks. Typically, this is an indicator that the surface of your weld was smooth enough to release the slag easily. Overall, this weld came out pretty good. It's nice and smooth other than one spot I skipped right over here. I'm happy with the overlap. It turned out to be about 50% like I was looking for. Once you have a couple welds down and they're nicely overlapped, keep going on a full plate. You'll create something called a padded plate. And doing those nice straight passes with that overlap is the fastest way to ensure muscle memory in terms of arc length, rod angle, and creating a successful weld. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Take a minute, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. Weld Pro is committed to releasing tutorials and how-to videos to better help you understand your welding machine and understand the welding process. Thanks again from all of us here at Weld Pro. We can't wait to see what you build with your MiG 200.